Today I wanted to continue my exploration into ColourPop. I did something on Sweet Talk recently and that was my very first, where is it? Right here. My very first ColourPop palette and I really, really am liking it. The one thing I will say is these in here look to me to be like pinky, peachy colors, but on they were reading really more orangey and I think that has a lot to do with how they've placed them in this palette, this whatever this uh, really beautiful reflective quality is. If something is in black, I think it looks different than if something is housed in white and something in gold. And this gold has, you know, all these beautiful colors along with it. Gold has kind of like a rainbow thing going on, and I think that kind of changes the color, your perception of what it is. But I really, really do like it. And I will say this, if you have been wanting this, but you can't see $49 for this, you might want to get this. Uh, the colors are very similar, however, this does have the lilac duochrome in it that's pretty gorgeous. But if you have the Huda Obsessions in the purple, that color right in the middle will probably hit the spot for you. But let's move on. While I was at the checkout at Ulta, there were two palettes. You know how they put those little, I don't know what you call them, not stanchions, but you know, they put those things at the checkout area and it's dangerous. And I thought, well, that's really pretty. I don't know. Here's the deal though. I, I just, I'm thinking I'm sending, I'm going to bring this back right off the bat because I did some swatching and the um, mattes look really, really similar to each other. And I think on the eye, there might not be much of a difference. Let's get into it. Usually the first thing I do is like a transition, kind of tucking back my hood a little bit. I have my foundation on, I put some foundation on my eyes, and I powdered it this time, which I usually don't do. And I'm thinking, well, I guess this is the only color I can do with that, so that's what I'm going to do. And just kind of feel the orbital bone there. And I'm not going to be too specific right now. I'm just kind of placing everything, which is what I've been doing lately. And bring it out a little bit on the side. Just kind of stamping it more than anything. And honestly, if you wanted to, if you're having a good hood day, <laughs> there is such a thing. You could just do this and go. But I say that a lot. I'm like, oh, you know what? You could do this and go. Just put on some mascara and some liner and call it a day. Oh my God, I forgot to say I'm the hooded lid and welcome to my channel. Okay. So this looks like the next darkest shade. So I'm going to load up here. Excuse the hole in my sweater. I'm really self-conscious about it. I hope it looks like a buttonhole. I'm really very good about taking care of my clothes. And I store my sweaters because I have so many in plastic containers, but I keep them with mothballs. And I figure they're going to be pretty safe. And now that it's getting cooler, I'm starting to go through my sweaters and pulling things out a couple at a time, and then I'll put them back away and pull out a couple of more, a couple of a time, because it's hard to get these plastic containers out, and, and put it on and saw that hole. And I'm very disappointed that the moths had managed to get in there. I tend to, I do to my closet, I will, once a year, take out my really nice things, because moths like wool, but they'll eat other stuff too. And I will hang them up outside because larva doesn't live, the sunlight will kill the larva. And then I will spray them with this weird spray I have, put them back in my closet. And at the same time, I will put more moth cakes in there and then you know, twice a year I will replace my moth cakes 
because I've had situations where I don't wear something for a long, long time, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to pull out that dress, da 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 da, and it was completely destroyed. And pants have been completely destroyed. Um, one thing that's really important, let's talk about clothes, shall we? Whoops! Is to have your things cleaned before you store them away. Now, some things you aren't expecting to be stored away. It just happens that you aren't using them. But sweaters, you kind of know, where I live anyway, you're not going to be using it again for six months. And I do try to do that. So I guess I didn't do that with this sweater. But they're looking for something to eat on. And that could be food, but it could also be sweat. It could be skin. I know that sounds horrible. Maybe we shouldn't talk about this <laughs> anymore. I'm just blending these together. I'm going to do some comparison swatches to some other things I own later on just to help me decide if this is something I really, really want to keep. Next darkest is right here, so I'm going to go in with that. The thing is with these palettes that they're doing that are themed to a certain color, I like that idea, but you're also kind of limited. But on the other hand, if it has one or two shades that you really love, that you could use with something else, it's just something you can, you know, reference all the time and pull in to help finish a look. And I do have, well, I have one palette that I use that way. It's kind of a weird palette, but it has a couple of colors that I just don't have anywhere else. Before I go on, I'm just going to do blending with a clean brush. There's not a color in here that I would use for this. There's not a cream color. There's an inner highlight, but I don't want to do that. All right, so far, we are Crepey Lid approved. Uh, it just, they blend lovely. They're not dusty. I do work my brush. I work the powder into the brush and then knock off, but no fallout, no dustiness, blending very well, and the payoff is very nice. So, thumbs up. A little more with that dark color, darker color again, just because I feel like the eyes aren't quite even. It's hard to tell. And just into the crease, but with my eyes open so I can really see that the eyes are looking even. Okay, I think we have accomplished that. So it's just about, you know, what do you want to do for your lid color? You're either going to... So your choices are pretty much this. If you do this one, your whole lid's pretty much the same color. And if you do this one, you're getting a teeny bit of contrast. You know what's weird? This is called Bird of Paradise. And the flower, Bird of Paradise, has some blue in it. Some beautiful, beautiful blue. And that would be such a good idea in here. Like, I could have done without both of these they're so similar and then put that blue in there so it would really be a bird of paradise and you can get some really nice contrast i'm going to go with the yellow i think whoa okay that is really pretty i'm just going to kind of feather it out very lightly that is such a pretty color. Wow. Color pop, you're surprising me all over the place. I'm going to try it again. Uh, I'm going to do the other side with another finger because I have a tendency to fat finger. So this would be the finished look, right? Do some lining, do some mascara, do the blush, the whole bit. But I kind of like this idea of a blue and I'm going to see, I have a blue pencil by Marc Jacobs, that's a possibility. Um, wow, I don't really have much blue because blue, blue is really hard for me. 
I'm going to go into my NYX palette. All right, here's the Swear By palette, and there are blues galore in here. I just need to do a little bit of swatching to figure out which blue I want to do. There is not a blue in here that reminds me of the blue in The Bird of Paradise. I think you would really call that a royal blue, and maybe... See, this one seems a little too dark. And this is a little too light. But I'm going to do this one. It's not exactly the color that I need, but I don't care. And I'm just going to... I could be messing this up. Do it right in the center, because I just don't want that on the outer. You know, if I had, if my eyes were shaped differently, I would probably approach this blue differently. Okay. So this is unplanned, but sometimes, you know, that's cool. Um, yeah, you know what? I may as well have gone in with a liner because of the way my eyes are hooded. That's all you're really going to see. So, I am going to go in with this liner. Because I'm afraid this shadow is really now going to just transfer and kind of ruin everything. So that was probably a mistake. I had a mistake, but a mistake I can recover from. I'm just going to wipe this away to the best of my ability. Because I just know it's going to go straight into my crease. Hi, baby. I'm having better luck taking it off on the other eye. Okay, back to fix it mode. Leave it to me to have everything's going fine. I'm like, ah, let's let's play with it and mess it up. I'm gonna mix two colors together. Um, I'm gonna mix this one and this one to try to go over that blue a little bit because I want to cancel out. Oh, you guys, I think I messed that up. Back in with the gold. All right, when my eyes are open, you really can't see what I'm doing anyway. Time for Big Fat Blender. If I hadn't segued, nah, segue is not the right word. If I hadn't gone off the track with the blue shadow, I probably wouldn't need to do this big blend because these have blended so incredibly nicely. This is crepey lid approved. It is hooded lid approved. I'm going to finish up my makeup and I will come right back and we'll do a little bit of swatching. All right, I'm back. My makeup is on and just did a little blush. I actually did a little highlighter, very rare for me. A little lip, a little bronzer, and done. Now let's take a look at some other palettes. If you do not own an orange palette, then this is a palette that you should absolutely get. If, however, you have a lot of orange palettes, I'm thinking probably not. There's nothing color-wise so unique here that it warrants owning it. But I wanted to just swatch a couple of colors. I don't want to go nuts because I don't have that much arm space. So we're going to take this one, this one, 
this one and as you can see they're incredibly similar to each other if you have the sweet talk I'm not sure you need to go there even though the sweet talk looks like it's pinky in here on me it didn't read that pink so uh, this one this one I mean this is a strange palette I like it but it's strange so there's some sweet talk colors right you can I believe get the same look that I did here with the sweet talk I really do unless it's the gold that you're after which is not in the sweet talk palette if you own this, let's take this little peachy color. So that's right there. It's not incredibly dissimilar to this. You know what I mean? It's like you can look at it and say, oh, it's incredibly different. Are you kidding? When it's on your eyes, though, eh, not so much. And let's take a look at this one. And I have not pre-swatched these. This is just a guess. So, um, here, 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 just a couple of colors from the top row. It's in the same family. It's so inside the same family that if you have this palette, you don't need this palette. If you had a choice, money wasn't an object, between this one and this one, I would go for this one because there is more variation in here, even though the variation is... It's difficult. This is the most challenging part of this palette, and also this smells really nice. If you own this one, I don't think you need this one. I just don't. I feel like on the lids, they will read a very similar kind of look. And the same thing, there's enough range from lighter to darker to do that lighter up here, a little darker here, a little darker even lower. So I'm not really sure I would do both. I mean, that's how I'm thinking. If you have the Viseart palette, again, you would think, oh, okay, well, I don't see it, lady. But you do have these brownie orangey colors in here. Right here. Different look, but remember how it's going to read on your eyes. If you have this, I don't think you need the ColourPop either because I think you can kind of get the same looks. You might have to blend with a, a lighter color but there's the Safari palette and here is the Bird of Paradise palette. I just feel like a lot of colors even though they look so different in the pan or so different swatched when they're on your eye they may not but I, I'm just talking about how you're using your money more than anything. If you already own the Denona, why spend money on this? I know it's not that much money, but I'm just saying. I am saying, however, as a shadow, these are great for crepies. They aren't bunching up. They're not, not blending, double negative. Okay, <laughs> they aren't bunching up. They blend beautifully. I can't say how long they last, but the colors are very nice. I just would have appreciated, I'm just saying, a blue in here because they're calling it a bird paradise and we need that blue. It's like a purpley blue, like a royal blue. Would be just fun. Just, you know, take out one of these that is too repetitive and put something else in it. But look, if you don't have any oranges, if the orange is just not your thing and you want to play with it, but you don't want to spend $65 on a palette, yes, then get it. But that's totally your decision. This is just my point of view. And my second ColourPop play, I'm actually wearing the blush today. This one here, I think it's called Flirt Something. I guess maybe you want to know. Maybe you don't. Growth Flirt. Oh, I get it. It's like growth spurt. Like, it's like growth spurt? I get it. It's like growth spurt, but it's growth flirt. It's still weird. I'm, I'm going to stand by my initial thoughts on this. But this is a really, really pretty color, and I like this a lot. And that's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> 
Um, I don't know when I'm going to post this, but yeah, I'm not going to say it because it'll probably won't matter anymore. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for me today, taking a second look at ColourPop. The shadows themselves, great. Not really sure you need it, but that's for you to decide. I like working with these a lot. I do think that this is very thoughtful. I like the way they graduate the colors so it's lighter to darker to darker to darker and there is a difference from one shade to the other and that's really important if you really want to have if you want to build the idea of depth around your eyes it accomplishes that. I just do wish and I get the idea is it's monochromatic but I just do wish because I already have a lot of oranges. I can get this done. I kind of wish they put a blue in there. It would have made sense to me. And that's going to wrap it up for me today. I hope it was helpful. I want to thank you for coming, and I hope you come again. In the meantime, I'm wishing you a fantastic day.